We'll now move into the Lowndes County cases. We have two of them this evening. Mr. Diller, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Commissioners. First case for you tonight is the Gresham Event Venue, located at 8415 Old Valdosta Road. It involves approximately 10.3 acres of a larger 1,200-acre tract, more or less. It's currently zoned EA Estate Agricultural, and the request is for plan development, or rural plan development in this case, PDR, so that the property may be utilized for a club, lodge, meeting, or event facility with the availability to accommodate overnight guests. Future uh, land use map depicts this as an agricultural area, and the only wetlands are there on the man-made property. As with all rural event venues, notice was given to the adjacent property owners and those with also within a half mile radius. Notice was published, uh, pu posted on the property Wednesday the 17th. Letters were mailed out on the 13th. You can see the 10.4 acres here in its approximate entirety. This is an overview of the site plan. I'll zoom in here in a moment. This is the bulk of it, the remainder being simply the driveway. You'll note here the existing lodge and existing accessory building are the only actual structures on the property. The applicant has depicted potential future buildings in the event he decides to expand. This is an overall aerial from last year. You'll note the two existing buildings in the man-made pond. And these are images from the property. You'll note in the upper right-hand corner, the focal point of the triangle, trying to give you an idea as we move about the property. The main lodge itself. Looking to the southeast, where the potential future building may or may not be. Out towards the pond. Turning back to the house. Coming around the house, looking towards the northeast, toward the intersection of Old Valdosta and Salem Church Road. And as we exit towards the property, you'll notice there's approximately 1,500 feet from the house's location and the nearest properties uh, to the northeast. So again, staff is recommending approval with the following conditions that property be used for use is permitted in the EA zoning district and a club lodge meeting or event facility with overnight accommodations where the operation of the facility is limited to meetings, retreats, celebrations, and weddings for groups no larger than the fire code allows for the proposed buildings and area. Outdoor performances by bands or ensembles that are accessory to a meeting, retreat, celebration, or wedding shall be allowed. Unless otherwise noted on the approved site plan, the use of the property shall be subject to all standards applicable to properties in EA zoning. The operation of the event facility shall adhere to the Lowndes County Noise Ordinance, and exterior lighting shall be shielded to avoid direct illumination of adjacent properties. Thank you. Commissioner, any uh, questions for staff on this case? I have a question. Yes, sir. What, is, what does fire code allow for the existing building? Is it 16? The applicant is proposing 16 overnight guests. Uh, plans that the architectural plans have not been submitted to the fire marshal yet for approval. This would trigger a change of use. 16 would be the limit before sprinkling would be enacted. So yes. Just curious, so uh, this is triggered by just wanting to advertise this going forward. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Opening up to the public involves this. Okay. Was this existing building built as a lodge or a home? I believe it was built as a home. I don't have the whole records of it. It looks like it was renovated uh, in January to some degree. Okay. Maybe the applicant's representative is here and maybe able to speak to more of its historical use. JD, could you show that uh, slide again, that's about 1,500 feet to the nearest landowner that you showed? Is yes, that, sir. Is it the trees or the open area with the landowner? Th this is the edge of the property. You'll note on the site plan in the upper right hand corner, approximately <coughs> 1,500 in the feet separate. Oh, okay, I see now. The okay. planted pine versus the natural timber. Okay, thank you. I want to ask the, um, based on the previous uh, slide that showed the uh, future uh, restroom building, future uh, uh, structure, is there a time frame on when they uh, expect to go? No, sir, that was, that was uh, put there at the request of staff to show any future plans that might happen. 
to include them as this site plan uh, for future. If not, they would have to come back for a rezoning request again. So any future plans are shown here, but there is no timeline uh, or to, to develop them. If the applicant would like to speak to any plans, that would be on them. But at this point, they're just showing it as a possibility. Yes, sir. And I'm sure, is there any max out as far as future building and total area? It's not shown on this plan, and that's that's what they're bound to. So the 3,200 square feet would be the largest next structure. And you'll note in your packets there are additional occupant loads for surrounding event venues mm -hmm. to give you some sort of idea of scale. But again, not knowing what type of building that would be, if it would be closed or not, or it would be more of an open pavilion. So that 32 that's a cumulative future restrooms, future barn, everything that's cumulative? No, sir, that is the future barn building itself is approximately 3,200, and then the restrooms being approximately 600, um, and then the side of the bar showing approximately 200 square feet there. <clears throat> so just one structure, okay. And so this thing, uh, a PD, the no changes can be made to this without coming back. Is that correct? Any changes to the overall intensity okay. would, would have to trigger any further questions for staff on this case? Thank you, Dave. We will now enter the public hearing portion on this case. <clears throat> Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. And if you've not already done so, state your name and address for the record. Bill Holland with Coleman Town, 109 South Ashley Street, here on the house. Last year, we had a question. Uh, just so you know who, who Tony Gresham is, Tony Gresham uh, owns the Lava Plantation, which is not a, it's not a wedding venue, but he's, he's you know, used to running this type of flight safety facility. Uh, I think the intention here is, is pretty much to handle the overflow from the other existing ones around right now, maybe have reversal damage there, some of those people stay there. That's the initial intention. Of course, he wasn't going to box himself in and he's on the right to, to build a facility in case the need is there. He has to do that. Uh, Tony Gresham's here. He's certainly better at answering, answering these kinds of questions than I am, but he did tell me in response to some of your questions the home was built, or the house, the structure that's there was built as a home initially, uh, and that he has really no time frame. For any additions he's going to open up to the smaller groups he's going to have. Uh, and again, I'm here to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Mr. Holland? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. No other speakers in favor of this case? <clears throat> Are there, is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. Brad Folsom with uh, Moore Park of Rogers, 2611 North Patterson. Uh, I'm here representing several adjacent homeowners uh, in this request. And you know, when you talk about event venues, everybody thinks it's positive because everything that happens generally is, unless you live near one of those event venues. Um, and despite Mr. Gresham's current proposal of keeping it small and adding his overflow, the site plan you see allows for significant future expansion without coming back here. It allows for a 3,200 square foot building that could be used for weddings. It allows for all kinds of ventures to be held here. Um, you know, Mr. Gresham, his attorney mentioned he has another plantation 15 minutes north of there in Cook County. That's also meant for small events, except I've been to events over 150 people. So I'm not sure what that says about this whole proposal. But I think you have to look at the fact that in this area there are no commercial uses. Within a half mile of this particular facility, there's 30 to 40 homes. Um, it has always been residential. It has always been larger tracks except for some right on the northeast corner, it's mostly large track that somebody has gone out and built a state agricultural type home. Um, you know, the Lounge County Hores Ordinance, which is one of the conditions they would have to comply with, really only requires that noise be plainly audible inside a house after 10 o'clock. There's not a whole lot of acuity to the statute. Uh, and that's 
easily broken in this case or, or, or violated. Um, you know, that I, you will hear, I believe, from a neighbor of Fox Hill, where four of these generally are in County. We've also learned about a couple who are unpermitted that are doing the same thing that I pointed out to JD. But in each of these cases, it all sounded great until it occurred near their home. And until they started hearing some songs at 10 or 11, 12 o'clock on Friday and Saturday night, which makes for a pretty unpleasant uh, living area. I would also um, you know, point out to you that the application letter seems to couch this in terms and, and this column couch it in terms of just being overflow and accommodations. Well, that, that's fine, but like I said, the site plan allows for more, and so does the staff report. The staff report clearly points out that there can be meetings, retreats, celebrations, weddings. No real limit on the number of people that can be outside this facility. It's just that 16 can sleep inside. So we could have 500 people here for an event tomorrow if you approve this, and only 16 of them could stay at home. But you could do it outside of your tent or whatever, and then you have the attendant traffic, you have the attendant parking issues, this is a one-lane um, asphalt drive that comes in. I don't know if you've ever been down Old Bob Oscar Road. But going north, you come down a hill, you go around the flat curve, and this makes an immediate left into this facility, and then makes an immediate right inside the fence about 15 or 20 yards off the roadway. Let's just say you have 75 cars you up within 10 or 15 minutes of each other. Well, there's going to be a line of traffic out on Old Bob Oscar Road trying to get in, same thing trying to get out. If there's an emergency with a one-lane road, it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to get out, everybody at the same time. So I think you ought to consider all of those things as you consider this request. Um, you know, and, and I think it comes down to the fact that it's almost a policy decision for this body and the Lowndes County Commission, and that is, how many of these do we really need? We have four operating in the county. They operate at high level. They're already causing problems for some of the neighbors around. Do we really need to take away rural land that's being enjoyed by folks for the purposes that was intended, agricultural, living on large tracks, and allow another event venue that can be expanded? Make no mistake, you're not approving 16 people staying in the home. You're approving a venue that could attract a large number of people. And it won't have to come back here because the PD is in place and the site plan is in place. So just keep all of that in mind, and I urge you to vote uh, to recommend the denial of Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I next speaker, may I ask a question of the staff? Of course, please. Uh, Jody, could you explain the sound ordinance for the county? Uh, Mr. Paulson is correct that, again, the Moore's ordinance is measured after 10 p.m. Okay. as measured inside the home. That's not to say events cannot continue into other hours of the night. However, the sound cannot be heard in your home after 10 p.m. or before 7 a.m. Now, again, if that if is the case, code enforcement would be called, uh, issue would be investigated, but um, again, that is a code enforcement issue who enforces this particular noise ordinance. So music could continue after 10 a.m. if they, I mean, sorry, 10 p.m. if they took it down a notch, that's what you're saying. Yes, yes ma'am, as long as it cannot be heard inside the house. Uh, okay. Yes, sir, that is correct. It's on page two of the Atlanta County Noise Ordinance, which is here. All right, we still have some time. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. If you've not already done so, state your name and address for the record. My name is Carl Penny. I live at 8601 Morgan Road, uh, which is about a mile from an existing wedding venue <clears throat> that is uh, torture for my neighbors. This uh, proposed venue, I believe, is about five to eight miles as the crow flies from my home. And so I am particularly sympathetic to the people that will be suffering from this uh, wedding venue, which is synonymous with noise pollution. The county ordinance does nothing to abate our problems with our local venue. Uh, the, the music starts 
when the DJ or the band starts setting up about five, and it goes on until 10 o'clock, and yes, you can hear the music from inside the house. We have had the county manager out, we have had our county commissioners out, they have heard the problem, they have experienced it, and yet there is apparently nothing more that can be done. Uh, my neighbors that live closer, I, I, I honestly don't know how they get through the weekend nights when the uh, venue has a, a, a party going on because the windows in their house shake with the loud noise. Now you know when you're driving down the street and someone with their car radio up too loud, you know how it reverberates and it echoes in your ear. That's what it's like all night long. So I want you all to please keep this in mind. When you talk about any other party venue or any other wedding venue going out into the country, is how this sound carries. It doesn't matter. It is worse in winter, but it doesn't really matter if trees are hopefully absorbing the sound. They are not. The music is such that it's a pounding, pounding noise all night long. Please, please keep that in mind with your recommendations. And of course, the city council will hear this as well, or county commissioners, um, as they are well familiar with our wedding venue and the problems that we all have had. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Time for the speakers has expired, so this will close the uh, public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any comments or a call for a motion? I have just a question for JD. Um, JD, are there any kind of ingress and egress um, regulations that come into play for public gathering places regarding um, metering traffic in or out, or having more than one lane, or what to do if there's uh, some sort of event that requires a uh, response vehicle to come in? Those are monitored by the county engineer and the fire marshal uh, for access easements. Uh, you'll note on this site plan down at the very bottom there is a secondary future access shown. Um, this does open up to Salem Church Road which is a local county maintained road. It is unpaved. Um, but again this site plan was presented before those members. They had no other comments about this. Um, and again upon inspection of the building or the facility themselves, if approved, uh, they may impose different occupations uh, or occupant loads on this building. But at this time, they had no <coughs> comment uh, to regulate um, or, or comment on those concerns, sir. It is noted. Any other comments, commissioners? Then I will entertain a motion. Is there a motion on this case to be had? Well, I'll do it. So, Thank Mr. You. Chairman, on the case in front of us, it's one time, RZ 2024 that's 01, for uh, approval of the bid, it, uh, venue from EA to uh, PDR plan development. Uh, with the four conditions. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Bailey to recommend approval, including the four commission uh, four uh, conditions put forward by staff. All in favor of the motion to approve? Oh, sorry. Commissioner Miller. 
Okay, I second the motion. Okay, thank you. All in favor? All opposed? I think that's three to five, Molly. Yes. Is that what you thought? I think I, I, think, I, I think we're confused. I made a motion, and Mr. Miller seconded it, but then opposed it. So is that, that I'm just curious. I believe that is correct, Mr. Miller. You opposed it, and you seconded it. Yeah, I think as a matter of parliamentary procedure, I don't know if you can do that or not. You can. So, you can. You can. Can we get a second from someone else? Okay. Commissioner Ball will second that. We take the vote again. Yes, we will. And all those in favor of the motion to recommend approval, please raise your hand. All opposed? Same vote, Bob. Does that fail?